little tough to preach to 206 tour staff here. Um, so, so the readings for today are about Cana, which you guys are very familiar with, right? It's because of you that I've actually been to Cana several times now. Um, and it's such an amazing place um, uh, to be and to, to, to know that Jesus was there. The Jesus that I love, that you love, that we lead people to, that we help people come to fall in love with. And it's a, it's a side of him that we don't often think about. We don't often think about um, him, you know, dancing. Did he dance at the wedding? Probably. I mean, it wasn't the boogie woogie, you know, it wasn't, you know, what we might think in our mind, modern stuff. But Jewish weddings are very festive. They, they drink a lot of wine. I mean, 20 to 30 gallons per, you know, gigantic. I mean, that's about this big and about that round. Um, it's actually because of you, again, 206 Tours, that I've been able to see one or two of those around the world. You know, they've been preserved. One's in Spain, and uh, I think there might be one still in the Holy Land. But it's an extraordinary thing to see that um, they like to party. So would our Lord himself have been involved in that wedding or would he have just been standoffish in the corner like, oh, I got to kind of be at this because he invited my mom. Um, no, it's Jesus. He delights in marriage. He delights when people are enjoying themselves at something that is designed by God, a beautiful wedding, a man and a woman getting married. And he would have been a part of that festivity. There's a film, I don't know if you saw it, uh, Mary of Nazareth that came out a few years ago now and, and um, an incredible film and it has scenes from the wedding feast at Cana and it actually shows um, our Lord you know having a good time I think he might even have like some kind of wine glass in his hand or something and it makes sense but it shows our lady there as well in a way that we don't often think about her would she have been there dancing yeah, she would. I love to think about that. Because oftentimes we see Our Lady as just a stoic statue, like this. Like, she didn't do anything else but stand like this for her entire life. Not the whole time, she did. But she was a woman, she was a mother, she had friends, and they invited her to a wedding. And she wasn't stoic in a corner, just standing there. She would have been very much involved, looking so beautiful. Oh, probably the bride was probably jealous, to be honest with you. She probably looked super beautiful, but <laughs> How do you compete with the Virgin Mother of God, you know, who's at your wedding? She probably looks so beautiful and, and so feminine and, and, and so lovely and was probably dancing the Jewish way, you know, very festive, very alive. Man, how I would love to have seen that. And I think that we will on some level in heaven. Because again, in heaven, you know, yes, there's going to be, I don't know what they do there actually, but... They'll be like this, yeah, for sure, right? Mm -hmm. But it's heaven, it's paradise, there's joy. You are in the wedding of the Lamb. God has married our souls in paradise, and so there's going to be rejoicing on a level we can't even fully understand, and we are going to be able to see Our Lady in a moment like they would have seen her 2,000 years ago at this wedding feast. So beautiful, so lovely, as our mother, filled with joy and just dancing. Not in ways that are, you know, we think modern dance stuff. No, 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 no. The most pure, modest, lovely thing you could possibly imagine. I think we even see this on some level with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, he's God. We will be on our faces for all eternity adoring him, but that's not all we're going to do. Somehow we're going to see the Jesus that I know in my heart, the one that I talk to every day. We're going to see him in a mode of being that we're not used to. Um, and that should do something to us. That should make us so happy to want to see that. I can't wait. I, I cannot wait to experience that. And how are we going to get there? Well, we know that one of the greatest gifts that Jesus has given to us is Our Lady. And that's why we have this feast today, Mary Help of Christians, because we need your help. You know that. Without her, we're not going to be able to go the distance. We're not going to be able to cross that finish line because she brought us Jesus and she continues to bring us Jesus. That's her whole purpose and that she wants to continue to do for us. And you guys, you do that in an incredible way here at 206. 
even though I know I can only imagine that when you're stuck in the administration and just computing the data and getting the names and making sure the guide is doing this and the hotel set up and this that and the other I'm sure that that can be somewhat burdensome and taxing and doesn't seem to be like the most exciting thing in the world but you know what you're doing is helping Our Lady to bring souls to Christ to bring souls to Jesus and you're probably not going to see the fruit of a lot of what you do in front of your computer burning your eyes out night and day doing what you do until the end and you you may think well I don't do much I mean I, I I'm not really a part of it it's the priest who does it on the pilgrimage or it's the guides or the visionaries or whatever yeah okay okay but it doesn't just happen right we just don't show up uh, and, and everything's ready to go with a guide and a bus and a hotel without you guys none of this is possible Mary really and truly is using you to bring souls to Christ to get them to encounter Jesus and to fall in love with him and maybe you need to hear that maybe you need to to be reminded of that because you actually are a huge part of an apostolate that is centered on Jesus Christ yeah you get a paycheck and you get you know all that okay yeah, you gotta make a living for sure but you're really being an important part of this process of people coming to know Jesus Christ and I'm grateful for that myself I really and truly am I know that the, the detail and the work that goes behind these things um, would not be possible without you guys and I think that Our Lady in a special way I think she's very grateful to what you do too really and truly um, she needs you in a certain sense and what you do it's really vital it's really important so um, from my heart as a priest who you know only goes with 206 tours pilgrimages um, I'm extremely grateful for you guys I really really am um, I know the hard work that goes into it and Jesus and Mary know too they know too and so in your in your own way you are actually helping people to get into that wedding feast you are helping people to be able to encounter Christ on a level that is preparing them for the kingdom of heaven, the wedding feast of God and our souls. And I think that um, you should be proud of that. You should, should maybe be told and reminded of that by someone like myself, a priest, that um, you're, you're very much needed, very much loved, and very important in what is taking place here. This is an anointed organization, really and truly. Um, that's why I only do my pilgrimages with 206 because there's something special here and um, Our Lady loves each and every one of you very much so on this feast day of our, 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 our Lady help of Christians give everything to her in your situation in your your own life whatever is going on in your life the drama the relationships the family dynamics and all that stuff sweet mother I give you everything and just ask her to bring you two closer to Jesus and to help you to fall more in love with him. Because he, he, he is really, really in love with you guys. He really, really 